In this presentation, we will enter a reversing entry related to accrued interest. In other words, we entered an adjusting entry in the past to record accrued interest and related interest expense. This time, we're going to be reversing this as of the first day after the cutoff period, as of the first day in March in our case. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to be opening up our balance sheet and income statement by going to the accounting drop down and going on down to the balance sheet first. We're then going to go up top and mouse over that tab and then right click on that tab and duplicate it. We'll do the same for the income statement. Go into the tab to the left. Let's go back on over to the tab to the left. We're going to go to the accounting drop down again. We're going to go on down to that income statement this time. Once that opens up, we're going to uh, mouse over it again, mouse over the tab, right click on it, and we're going to duplicate that tab. Going to go back to the balance sheet then, back to the balance sheet all the way to the right, the tab on the right. We're going to be changing the date to the cutoff date we'll be looking at. That's going to be the end of February. So I'm going to say this has got to be up to the end of February, which has 29 days in it in 2020, which is nice. Good thing to know about. And if we're scrolling down here, then <clears throat> what we did last time is we did an adjusting entry. We did an adjusting entry for accrued interest. In other words, we had interest that had accrued uh, that we had not yet uh, paid and therefore had to put a liability on the books related to the accrued interest as well as the interest expense. So here's the accrued interest or interest payable for the interest that had been incurred that we had not yet paid. It was on this loan. So we're saying this second loan that we had right here uh, we're not going to pay the interest and principal until the end of the loan. Therefore, the uh, interest had been accruing and we, we're not going to pay it yet until the end of the loan. So now we're going to think about a reversing entry. So what we have on the books then is this 250 here and we have on the income statement in accrued interest. If we go on down to the accrued interest, uh, interest expense, we're going to have the 250 in here as well. So now what we want to do is reverse this as of the first day of the next time period. Now, I do want to put a little bit of a caveat in here. Remember what happens with the reversing entries. What we're trying to do is say, hey, look, I want to make things as easy as possible for the accounting department to just do the accounting entries. If that's not perfect accrual, then you deviate from perfect accrual when it when you need to do so in order to make the, the logistics of entering the data as easy as possible. And then we'll make adjusting entries at the end of the period to be more on a accrual basis. And th therefore, the adjusting entries we make on the accrual basis at the end of the time period, there's two objectives we have as the adjusting entry department. One, to make things as perfect as possible for uh, the, the financial statements at that point in time. And then two, to put it back the way it was when necessary in order to fix this information so that the accounting department can do their job, you know, as easy as possible. Imagining the accounting department being separate than the adjusting department. So typically here, I mean, the accounting department, if we left this on the books, they would see this 250 on the books. And um, that when they make the payment later on, they would kind of have to reverse that when they make the payment. So let me think about that in, in terms of normal, normal uh, loan terms, not the loan we actually use. But let's think about this loan, the, the second loan that we make a payment each month on. Let's say that we had a payment on this loan, uh, which we make each month that we had uh, uh, made an accrual entry for, for, you know, let's say the, the 291. Well, the next time they make a loan payment, it's even more complicated than even just looking at the amortization table because now they got to they gotta say, okay, I paid the, the 1359 and then I have to pay uh, and, and then I have to reduce or record the interest and the principal portion. But the part of the part of the interest portion is not is, is now recorded as a payable on the book so I would have to basically reverse the payable that's on the books that I didn't even do it was done by the adjusting department and that would be confusing so it would be easier for us then to say we're just going to reverse it and then you and the accounting department just do whatever you would do according to the amortization table when you make the payment now the reason I want to look at this loan is because it's kind of more of a normal loan where that would be the case and we know that next month they would be making a payment so I want to reverse it so that next month when they make the payment they don't have to deal with a payable that's going to kind of mess things up. So we'll do the reversing entry. Now, the one we're actually going to be using is this one, which is a little bit different here because uh, if we do the adjusting entries on a month by month basis, even though the interest had accrued, it's not really going to mess up the accounting department until they actually make the loan payment at the end of six months because they're not going to be making an interest payment next month. 
they're not going to be making the interest payment until after six months in this case just the way the loan was designed so in this case in practice i might simply just keep keep the not reverse it keep the uh, adjustment there since it's not going to have an effect for six months there's not going to be a monthly loan payment but i want to just show the reversing process uh, just so you can get an idea of what the, what the reversing up process might look like uh, as we do that so i'm going to reverse this here we're going to go back over and we're going to say i'm going to do a reversing entry as of march and, and we'll think about how that would work so let's go back over to the first tab and we're going to go to our journal entries we'll go to the accounting drop down we're going to go then to the reports then we're going to go on down to our accounting reports so we'll go on down to the accounting reports we're looking for the general journal or uh yeah the journal report I'm, I'm going into the journal report here and that's where we have the add new journal because that's what we want to do we want to add a new journal so that's what we will do we're going to add a new journal this is going to be a reversing reversing entry and it's going to be as of the first day after the cutoff so all of our reversing entries are going to be as of the first day after the cutoff in this case march 1st so march 1st description will be populated for us i'm holding down control by the way and scrolling up a bit so you can zoom into that one two five uh, zoom size and then we're going to have our adjustment which is going to be interest payable so i'm going to say interest payable this is a liability account it's going to be going down so it has a credit balance we're going to make it go down with a debit of the 250. so we're going to debit it for the 250 and then the other side is going to be going to interest expense and that's going to be the 250 now that look that should look funny because normally you never credit interest expense and it's going to be funny on the uh, on the reports on the income statement until a payment is made so let's think about how that would work so we're going to go ahead and post this let's post this out and then i'm going to go back up top to the balance sheet and then let's make this as of the first day of the next time period so we're looking at march 1st so as of march 1st we're going to update this and then we can go on down to that payable and that payable will now be gone see the payable has now been disappeared because uh, we no longer have it on the book so it won't we won't then have the accounting department then saying hey there's this payable thing this interest payable that showed up that i don't understand what it's what it's for some kind of a cruel process right on the income statement then if we go to the income statement and I uh, increase the, or let's just look at it the way it is. Let's update the report. Let's go on down to the interest expense and see what we have within it. Now, if I scroll on down, then we have our adjusting entry here that happened, making it correct as of the cutoff date, as of February 29th. And then our reversing entry as of the first day of the next month, reversing it back out to make us go back to basically where we were before that. Now let's go back up back up top and I'm going to change the dates on the income statement now just looking at the month of March. So let's consider the income statement as if we're just looking at March where the reversing entry was put in place. So if I go back up top and I change the first date from uh, March 1st, we're going to go from March 1st to March 31st. So we're going to go this is I got to go backwards here. We're going to go on back to March 31st. Yeah, like goes May, April march all right and then i'm gonna say update and then if we scroll on down notice we have down here then a negative interest expense and that should look funny of course we're saying well why you know why would we have a negative interest expense now normally what you would you would want to do is say that's okay it's, it's going to be negative until you make the interest payment right if the next once they make the interest payment it'll match out because the interest we basically pulled the interest expense where it should go in the prior month we re then we reversed it here and that means that when when the accountant records the normal entry if they were just to pay interest then they would they would credit cash and they'd have to debit the interest expense and it would wash out at the point in time so this would then wash out at the point in time that the interest payment was made now in our particular case the reversing entry is not going to actually happen in the, in the next month right because they're not going to pay all of it until six months later so we're going to have to make an adjusting entry, uh, you know, each time period until the until the actual payment was made after six months. However, if it was a normal loan, kind of like this type of uh, this type of loan, they would be making a payment next time period. And the interest portion that would they could just record it to interest expense like they normally would. They wouldn't have to then focus in on, well, what do I do with this, you know, accrued interest? They can just record it to interest expense according to the amortization table and it would wash out correctly at the point in time that the payment is made. 
So again, on this type of loan, you can kind of decide if you want to do the reversing entry or not. Uh, obviously, if it was a year end item rather than a month end, then it might be worth doing the reversing entry because they would be actually paying off the loan in, in the next time period. So in other words, if I did this as of December 31st and reversed it as of January, then when, when they actually pay off the loan, they can pay off the loan, uh, you know, reducing the loan by 50,000. They would then uh, reduce the cash by the 51,519 and they can report, they can post the other side to interest expense, right? And it would wash out, it would net out against the negative number that would be in there and that would properly uh, kind of record the, the information. So like I say, in this case, if we're doing it month to month, you could decide whether or not to reverse it. If you were in this case, then you'd probably want to reverse it. It would probably make it easier on uh, the accounting department. So that's it for now. Let's get out of here.